This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. I'm Patrick Gilchrist, the Warning Coordination Meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Glasgow, Montana, and this is your Drought and Climate Outlook Briefing for Eastern Montana. Today is November 18th, 2021. So to start out, we'd like to talk about the wind event that we had recently uh, from the 15th through the 16th, um, affected uh, much of the state of Montana, especially uh, east of the Continental Divide, saw some very strong winds. Uh, for Northeast Montana, you can see the big winner, as it were, was the Beaver Hill uh, Department of Transportation weather station um, near, between Dawson and Weibo counties there, who had 79 miles an hour. But you can see across Northeast Montana, you know, wind gusts, um, of 60 to 70 and even a little bit more miles per hour um, were fairly common. Um, did see a little bit of damage here and there, um, especially with siding and maybe a few roofs and um, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, no major impacts noted um, um, throughout the event. Uh, when we go a little bit further south into south central and southeast Montana, you can see they too saw very strong wind gusts, um, especially uh, just downwind. Uh, of the uh, Beartooth mountain range. Uh, you can see uh, wind gusts of 81 miles an hour, um, just uh, down downwind of those. Uh, elsewhere, you can see anywhere um, upper 50s uh, to the 60 mile per hour range. Um, if we go down into north central Wyoming, you can see they actually did get a 95 mile an hour wind gust uh, right along the interstate there. Um, so again, a, a very windy um, time period for uh, much of Montana and even portions of north central Wyoming. They alluded to earlier, we did see some damage. These are images from uh, the Billings area, um, but you can see, you know, a few things blowing around, a couple fences uh, damaged, a bent flagpole. Um, I know up here in Glasgow, we did see some siding ripped off, a few downed uh, uh, limbs, a couple of power outages reported, but uh, by and large, um, you know, like I said, no major impacts, um, you know, especially being widespread or anything like that. Quick look back on the January to October uh, time frame, looking at precipitation. Again, not gonna come as any surprise given uh, the drought that we've been briefing on now for uh, many months that uh, you can see most of Eastern Montana in that much below average uh, precipitation rank, a um, few counties in that more below average area, but uh, see much of the state of Montana, even extending um, into the Northern Rockies and even into Eastern Washington, um, continue to see uh, pretty substantial drought conditions and uh, very dry conditions um, so far for the year. So we hop over to temperatures. You can see, again, I don't think this is gonna come as any surprise given uh, how hot uh, um, the, the summer was, uh, but you can see most of the state of Montana finishing much above average, actually much of the Northern tier of the United States, again, finishing much above average. A couple areas um, right in North Central Montana and uh, South Central Montana as well, just uh, being more above average, but, uh, See the Western US too, um, just really much above average, uh, I'm, I'm just short of record. Um, so again, very hot, very dry so far for the year. So looking at uh, where we're at so far for the month of November, and again, I think temperature wise, uh, no surprises here, but uh, you can see we are still finishing uh, you know, several degrees above normal. Um, it's been a fairly warm fall so far this year, so I don't think it's gonna come as any shock to anybody that we are. Um, averaging, you know, anywhere from two to six to eight degrees above normal um, so far for the month of November. We hop over to precipitation again, uh, very much on the dry side. Uh, did see a little bit of precipitation, uh, bullseyes in areas northern Valley County and uh, northern Richland County into, into uh, southern Roosevelt County and then up towards Daniels County. Um, did pick up a little bit of precipitation, but again, this is a fairly dry time of year. Month of November is not known for being particularly wet. So, you know, to push us above normal on precipitation is not going to take a whole lot. And, and still really the story is the drought and uh, we're continuing to feel the impacts of that drought. So quick look at snapshots for Glasgow and Billings specifically, and you can see Glasgow is right at 45% of normal precipitation, um, which is the same as what we were last month. And uh, Billings likewise, 66% of normal precipitation, uh, which is the same as what they were. We have picked up a little bit of light precip this, this November, just a few hundreds here, a few hundreds there. Um, but you can see by and large, these again, these plateaus, these flat areas, these uh, prolonged periods without um, significant precipitation are really uh, evident on this precip graphs for both Billings and Glasgow that we've had uh, these uh, prolonged dry periods and uh, certainly continue to feel um, substantial impacts um, as far as the drought goes. 
So looking a little bit beyond Glasgow and Billings, um, just to some specific uh, uh, scattered um, areas across Northeast Montana, you can see uh, Culbertson's about 50% of normal, um, Sydney 57%, Circle 59%, uh, Jordan 62%, uh, Zortman 56%, uh, Glasgow still continues to be the, uh, the lowest um, that we've run across uh, for this chart, 45% um, of normal. And then as we get out into southeast Montana, even into south central or into central Montana, um, you can see a lot of areas continue to be very dry. Baker, only 60% of normal. Ingemar, 63% uh, of normal. Uh, Haver, 59% of normal. And uh, Lewistown, right at 60% of normal. So again, um, very much behind the curve as far as precipitation goes on the year. So a quick look at our drought status. You can see um, we're still not seeing a whole lot in the way of change. Um, in fact, we've seen some expansion of some of the more um, exceptional drought conditions um, throughout the state of Montana. But you can see here um, some improvement um, note noteworthy across the um, state of Washington, portions of, of Oregon, as they saw those uh, large atmospheric river events, which just absolutely drenched um, the Cascades um, um, mountain ranges and uh, some of the coastal mountain ranges um, in precipitation and has done um, a, a fair amount to put some dents into their droughts, unfortunately. Uh, much of that precipitation did not make its way over the Rocky Mountains. So again, Eastern Montana not seeing any relief um, like they saw. But here we go um, from all the way from Southwest Montana up to the central part of the state through Fergus County, and then uh, following the Missouri River from uh, Fort Peck Lake uh, almost to the North Dakota border, seeing those D4 exceptional drought conditions. So we're continuing to feel um, substantial impacts um, from from the drought, the ongoing drought, and. Uh, we go into North Dakota, you can see they've actually uh, seemingly picked up a little bit of improvement here and there, but of course, bordering up against Montana, still seeing those D3 extreme drought conditions. And again, much of Montana dominated by those D3 um, drought conditions with the exception of far Northwest Montana and Southeast Montana, where it's more um, severe to moderate drought. So again, this is really the, the tale of 2021 has been the drought and uh, not a whole lot of change. Um, and as I always ask, we do have these links up here um, for the National Drought Impact Reporter and the Montana Drought Impact Reporter, but um, if you just wanna Google those, um, please uh, pass on any information you might have, especially when it comes to specific impacts. Uh, I can't tell you how valuable that information is to the people making the decisions on uh, what this drought monitor looks like and uh, make sure that that information gets pushed up the chain to important decision makers so they have the best information possible. So please consider passing on any information you might have. Quick look at our short-term forecast. Uh, so this is the next seven days through uh, about November 25th. Um, you can see not much in the way of precipitation forecast for most of Eastern Montana and as well as the, the Dakotas. Um, so we're really expecting a largely dry conditions with seasonable temperatures. Um, you know, we're right near the seasonal normals, uh, maybe a few degrees either side of it, but uh, um, not a whole lot to talk about. We do have a weak system coming in Friday night into Saturday. Could bring a little bit of breezy wind Saturday and maybe some snow flurries, uh, maybe some light sprinkles, that sort of thing. And then of course it's going to cool temperatures down into Sunday, but again, not not a big, huge cool down. Um, again, staying within a few degrees of normal, five degrees of normal. So um, just have that weather system to talk about. And then maybe another week system midweek next week. So um, really fairly quiet um, fall weather um, in store for Eastern Montana. But uh, you know, certainly this is the time of the year when we can pick up those big uh, storm systems. And we are uh, certainly keeping an eye out for anything that could come to bring us a taste of winter. So eight to 14 day outlook uh, just doesn't look like, uh, again, um, much of a change as far as uh, trying to pick up any kind of winter conditions. Uh, you can see here favoring uh, above, a uh, pretty substantial um, favoring for above normal temperatures um, for the entire state of Montana, even a little bit uh, more substantial um, chance for uh, portions of uh, Eastern Wyoming um, into Southeast Montana as well. So again, it looks fairly warm in that November 25th through December 1st timeframe. And on the precip side, it looks like it's favoring above normal chances for precipitation for much of Western Montana. However, um, when you get down um, into Southwest and then of course, east of the Continental Divide, I'm still looking for more near normal precipitation outlooks with uh, maybe just a better chance in the far Southeast for below normal um, uh, precipitation. So again, we'll take normal precip at this point. We'll absolutely take uh, every drop we can get, everything helps, but uh, you know, certainly no, um, 
prolonged or significant uh, turnarounds as far as the drought goes uh, on the horizon, at least through the remainder of the month. Quick look at our three month drought outlook, um, just to give you a taste of uh, again what, the, what they're expecting over the next three months as far as potential for precip. But um, it is worth noting that uh, much of central Montana, um, all the way through the Northern Rockies and into the Pacific Northwest, uh, they are calling for you know continued drought, but some improvement. And certainly that is um, some cautious optimism to be had there. Of course, uh, unfortunately, the far eastern third or so of Montana continues to expect the drought to persist um, over, the, over the next three months. But uh, you know, certainly uh, any relief we could get, even through central Montana, would be much appreciated. Um, and then that um, we get into the December outlook. And this is just for the, the month of December solely. And we can see we're really on that equal chances side for Temperatures and then, of course, in precipitation, we do start to see again western Montana um, targeted for better chances for above normal precipitation that extending out towards central Montana as well. But again, the far eastern third, give or take, of Montana uh, continue to see more of that equal chances for precipitation, which would be more normal type numbers. And um, quick look at our updated winter outlook December, January, and February, our core winter months. And you can see we continue to be targeted for. Uh, better chances for below normal temperatures. You can see that's all the way from the Dakotas through Montana and over into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but again, that above normal precipitation chances continues uh, over what mainly Western Montana and Northern Rockies. Um, again, extending out into central Montana, but that far Eastern third, more equal chances for more normal um, type precipitation. And this is again, very consistent with um, expected La Nina conditions and well, actually ongoing La Nina conditions. We do have the La Nina advisory we'll talk about here in a second. Um, out in the uh, equatorial Pacific off the coast of South America. That's a cooling of the waters there. And uh, um, this is, uh, again, a very consistent outlook with uh, what we'd expect with La Nina conditions. So a quick look into uh, March, April, and May. This would be more of our spring outlook. And again, you can see uh, temperature-wise, really Montana's back into that equal chances, more normal type temperatures for the spring. And again, equal chances for precipitation as well. So I'm um, expecting more normal temperatures, more normal precipitation chances. And again, this is starting to get, when we start to get into May, that's when we start to pick up more of our wet months. So again, uh, at this point, again, with the ongoing drought, I, I'm very um, optimistic or feeling more optimistic because even normal precipitation would be appreciated and uh, at least uh, be a, a, a certain amount of relief that could come with that. So again, fingers crossed. Um, we do continue with that La Nina advisory. Um, it's uh, likely to continue through the winter, um, about a 90% chance of that, so confidence is very high. We're going to see those La Nina conditions through the winter months and then into the spring, about a 50% chance when we get into that March through May timeframe, which is our spring outlook. Um, we could be re returning to more neutral conditions as well. Um, we'll. So we'll just wait and see. And again, always keep in mind that uh, while El Nino and La Nina do have a substantial impact on on weather, especially in North America. Um, El Nino has got a stronger signal than La Nina. And with this La Nina, we can have uh, warm and dry La Ninas. Most recent uh, uh, example of that is uh, 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 this last winter that we went through. Um, we had La Nina, we were expecting, um, we were favoring uh, a cool and wet conditions for the winter and we ended up with uh, warm and dry conditions. So. Uh, La Nina does have a fair amount of variability associated with it. So just keep that in mind uh, when making those long-term plans. And I wanted to also touch about on the, the, the Beaver Moon lunar eclipse. Uh, we're going to have a partial lunar eclipse that starts late tonight. Again, this is Thursday night, um, lasting into Friday morning. The eclipse begins at 11.02 p.m. tonight, and hopefully there's enough breaks in the clouds that uh, we can check this out and uh, see it. It's going to be a fairly long one, as you can see here. Um, it's lasting uh, many hours here, but the, the maximum eclipse will be about 2.02 a.m. So if you're up, uh, take a peek at that. It could be pretty cool. So with that, I'll close it out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself, Patrick Gilchrist. You can email me there, or you can email Sean Palmquist. He's kind of picking up some of the uh, uh, role of the, the vacated uh, WCM position down at Billings since Tom Frieders is now in sunny, warm Phoenix, Arizona. So um, of course, we're going to miss him, but... Uh, um, Sean is, uh, I've gotten to know him pretty well. He's a great guy. Feel free to reach out to him for um, any questions you might have, and uh, we will see you next month. Thank you.